Good morning folks, welcome along to the vlog. We're in the brewery this morning and we're actually getting set for canning some beers. And uh, unfortunately not all of the beers that we want to can this week are actually ready. So I'll spin the camera around and I'll talk to you a little bit about what, when and why. So we've got several of our core range beers in the fermenters over here which are going to go in can this week. So we've got some proof of concept, some vacant gesture, a new batch for Christmas. And a couple of weeks ago, you'll recall that I made three beers on the pilot kit, an IPA, a double IPA, and indeed a barley wine. So the barley wine was set to ferment with um, a Kavayak yeast, actually. We used Voss in there. And it's done most of the work, but the fermentation has stuck at around 10.57. So, in order to get it going again, I'm going to Krausen with some other yeast out of an active fermentation. So, I've had a little bit of a read on the interwebs, and they've come to the conclusion, I've come to the conclusion, looking at the information there, that US05 at High Krausen is a pretty good yeast to try and kick things off again. If it doesn't work, then I might go to the extreme lengths of popping a little bit of maybe Lavin EC111, I think it is. Or, no, it's 11118, I believe, is the right yeast, which is a champagne yeast, which I've used in the past for ciders, and I know from experience that that yeast will ferment very, very dry. So I've just popped the top off of the barley wine fermenter there, and I might actually ask Gemma to come and hold the camera while we pop some Krausen in. So this is actively fermenting yeast, which I've just scooped out the top of a fermenter. And if I pass this to my glamorous assistant, then we're gonna, we're gonna Krausen this beer, and we'll see if this activates any more fermentation. Now I'm not worried about splashing too much because this vessel's full of CO2 and I'll purge afterwards as well if needs be but it is a barley wine so I don't think oxidation is as much of an issue as perhaps it would be on other beers I'm going to pop this in the sink because it's a bit dripping and we'll pop the, uh, pop the lid back on and fingers crossed some active fermentation in this vessel maybe within a few hours if it's going to do it I'll have the camera back oh you stopped it I didn't oh no she didn't I didn't I saw your finger go to, you went to stop it though didn't oh, you I did yeah there you go so um, we'll see if this kicks off again hopefully it will we should maybe perhaps see oh we've you can see there's definitely been a lot of activity up there anyway. And uh, well, we can't really see inside. But hopefully that yeast will get things going again. If we just come across to our TV that displays all of the tilt on there. We're looking at the third one across, the orange one. It looks a little bit yellow on camera. Um, but trust me, that's orange. Barley wine, 2022. It's at 10.55, 10.54. When I was talking a moment ago, it was at 10.57. So obviously moving that um, tilt hydrometer around with the cooling coils, nudge that number down a bit. I'm probably going to change the temperature as well. It's at 26 degrees there, and I had that high for the Kvayak yeast, but I don't think we need it that high for the 05. So we'll probably just... On our little controller here take that down to maybe just 21 I think 20 21 will be fine oh dear me there we go link and there we go she's now actively cooling now these are the beers that we wanted to um, to get into can today so these have just been crash cooling. I've not actually added any finings to them. 
That one looks rather darker than I anticipated. And so does this one, funnily enough. Uh, but yeah, they look rather brown, which was quite strange. Because they've been sealed off, so there's no oxidation happening in there. They've been uh, kept under CO2. Maybe it's just because I've got these jackets on them, they look a little bit darker. But we are about ready for these to come out of the fermenters and into, into some cans, maybe tomorrow. So we are on the following day and canning is about to uh, commence. We've got one tank full. I'm just waiting for the CO2 at the moment because I've got to purge the spear once we put it in there. This is something, all, all new things that we've started to do that we didn't do before. So we did purge the tanks before, the kegs that we fill with. But there's a, I'll talk you through the process now. So purging the kegs, add our priming sugar, and then we'll start to flow the beer into the tank. And then when the beer's flowing in the tank, we'll add five grams of ascorbic acid to protect the beer from any O2 pickup this side. And then when we put the spears in, I've got a little hook up on here, which connects the spear to CO2. So I can just turn this supply valve on there. And as you can see, we're now purging the inside of the spear with CO2. And that'll prevent any oxygen being in there. And of course, when we hook it up proper, if there was any oxygen in that spear, it would be injected directly into the base of the tank. Therefore, it would have to flow through all the beer and potentially oxidize the whole, th uh, whole shebang. We've also got everything set up on here. This has all been purged and cleaned. And at the moment we've got Starsan or uh, PAA actually sat in the lines. So the first six cans will flush the lines through with those. And then I'm also pleased to say, this is the beer that's going into the tank. And wow, it is absolutely crystal clear. In fact, it's one of the clearest beers I think I've ever taken off. So it's been sat cold crashing. That's evident by the fact that all of the connectors for the glycol have iced up completely. Look at that big chunk of ice around the John Guest fittings there. But the tank didn't manage to get below five degrees. It just shows you that five degrees is enough. So I'm gonna put the phone down because this is about full. We've just got a little bit of cling film on the top there to prevent any gas exchange with the atmosphere because obviously that's in a, a co2 environment in there and i'm going to need to pull that out in a second so we'll come back when we've we've fired the kit up so we've done quite a substantial amount of vacant gesture there and we're just moving in to the canning line the christmas ipa don't worry it's not actually that dark as it looks on the camera it's much paler than that. So that is mixed with ascorbic acid and dextrose ready to be hooked up to our canning line. And I think we'll probably get around 100 cans out of here, give or take, which should see us through to fill up the advent calendars for this year. Get yours ordered now on Harrison's Brewery forward slash harrisonsbrewery.com forward slash shop now there's not much uh, not much left on this batch you can see in the uh, fermenter what color it looks it looks decidedly brun but now now have a look at that that's more like the color of the beer that we're packaging so just about 100 cans looks like we're on target for it there are the cans sat there that we've done so far we'll just get a bit of a shot of the can filler in operation for the uh, viewers that may be new to the channel so can we get the control panel in there oh look at that what a shot so we'll just get the can lids on there across they go down comes the fill head assembly purge as indicated by the blue light and then fill Let's zoom out and get a shot of the operation and once all three of those yellow lights go out, 
they indicate that the cans have reached the fill sensors so the uh, solenoids close off at the back we get another blue light indicating CO2 purge whilst the caps go on hold on love that's probably going to be tough for it to and then we can see we've got a leaky one so what's happened here is these um, fill rods are slightly compressed on the end almost into like a duck bill and they hold the liquid inside the fill rod via surface tension which you can see there look there's a drip on that one that one's let go and there's a drip on that one so what sometimes happens is the action of the fill head retracting upwards and hitting the top stops which I've tried to cushion with a little bit of pipe um, sometimes just knocks that surface tension out and then the beer just flows out of the fill rod which is not what we want really because that means the air can then take its place but we generally don't have too many problems with it so let's get back out again have another shot there we go and then maybe from above into the oh I can't get the camera in that's unfortunate can't quite get the angle oh there we are you can't really see the beer though from this position until it starts to get up to the top. Oh, there we go. And you saw that pipe blow a big bubble there, because obviously it's purging CO2 out. That one seems to have lost its surface tension this time. Anyway, that's, uh, that's three minutes of your life you'll never get back. So let's get this finished because that's about to kick. So what we've done today is vacant, then we're doing the two Christmas beers in between and then we'll be doing the proof of concept out of that tank there. And what we do is we add all our ingredients into these um, mixing vessels if you like. They're 100 litre kegs but it allows us to mix any additives in there like priming sugars and antioxidants that we want to go into the beer before packaging. But I explained that to you earlier on I think. Of course we've got to get a shot of the seamer in action. So we're still chugging away with the cannon. At the moment we're on the proof of concept and we are just over a hundred litres in. But I've just taken some readings and I really had to show you this. I'm blowing my own trumpet a little bit here, but oh my goodness. I mean, look at that. It looks fantastic. There's a little bit of chill haze. If I just do that, you can see on the glass there. That's condensation, sorry, not chill haze. What am I talking about? Um, but I'm so pleased at how clear these beers are coming out. I don't know what I'm doing right. Oh, and it tastes fantastic. That's straight out the fermenter, that. It's been cold crashing for a week. And, oh my God. But I particularly noticed it when I was pouring from one jug to the next to degas it before I took a hydrometer reading. Just how lovely it looked. I mean... This is what I'm talking about. Oh, it's just amber nectar, mate. It's bloody gorgeous. Obviously, this is all going down the drain anyway, because it's just been mahoosively oxidised by passing it, like I say, from one vessel to the next to knock the CO2 out so I can get an accurate reading. But, oh, it's a shame to see her go. This is probably the best batch of proof of concept that I think I've brewed this year. Uh, and we're nearly in November. Get your act together, lad. <laughs> well, she's thawing out a little bit now, but that gives you an insight into how hard we've just worked this kit and uh, frozen the regulator up because we've been doing multitasks with 
filled up some casks, so we've had to purge casks. And of course, we've uh, we've canned all that beer there. Yeah, it's quite a big pallet of it. Don't worry, I'm not going to move it stacked like that. It will collapse. It's going to be all restacked because it has to be labelled yet. So we're just going to wait until it acclimatises because it's at four or five degrees at the moment. As soon as it's a little bit warmer, then we'll run it through the label machine, stack it properly on a pallet, and then we'll be banging it into one of these cold rooms, which will be obviously converted into a warm room. But that's another day <clears throat> in the brewery completed. I've hosed everything down, but what I haven't done is cleaned the floor. I've just rinsed everything off. So I'm gonna come back in in the morning. We're gonna clean the floor down. We're gonna clean all the equipment down, put everything away, because that canning kit is done with now until we get another batch of beer on the pilot kit, which is gonna to have to happen pretty soon because well, we're already on the 25th of October. You can see the time up there. It's, it's 11 minutes past eight, so it's a late one for us. But yeah, we're gonna have to do another couple of brews kind of as fast as possible in order for us to get them ready to go into the advent calendars in Cannes. So I could do with turning them around in 14 days, realistically. Can I do that with a couple of hoppy pails and IPAs? Maybe we can. I don't think, though, that the barley wine's going to make it. He's still stuck at 10.54, even though we krausened it yesterday. Yes. So, like I say, I'm going to leave all this till tomorrow morning because it's getting a little bit late. And I'm going to just throw my coat on, get in the truck and go home. So, don't forget, if you like this kind of stuff, keep liking, keep subscribing. There's plenty more videos coming along on the channel. And uh, make sure you turn that little notification on, you know, the bell icon, because YouTube Analytics is telling me that over 75% of you subscribers don't have it turned on, so you're potentially missing out on any videos that may or may not interest you. Anyway, on that note, we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.